take us away from this terrible virus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is my second to last Sunday with you all. And like a person dealing with a midlife crisis, I'm looking backwards and wondering, did what I did matter? Did I help anyone? Did I love the people of St. Basil sufficiently? I tried my best and tried to offer as many things as I could. And when I read, as I was preparing for this Sunday, the epistle, tears began to well up in my eyes. For I will read it to you again, so that it may be fresh in your mind. Brethren, we are God's fellow workers, meaning St. Paul and the rest of the clergy. You are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and another man is building upon it. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I didn't build St. Basil. You all existed for generations before I came here. I did not lay the foundation. I am one of those others that St. Paul says built upon it. Let each man take care how he builds upon it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I've tried throughout my ministry here to make that the forefront, that Jesus Christ is the foundation and the reason why we are here. And indeed, our parish council, when we came up with our vision statement of the parish, our mission statement, codified that by saying that we are a community growing with one another in Jesus Christ through our orthodox faith. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it, because it will, be rebuild, it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. In other words, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, the work that I have wrought in you will be revealed when it is tested in you. On the day that the fire comes, how will the work that I've put in you measure up? Will it remain? Will it still be beautiful? Will it still exist? Will it still be a treasure? St. Basil Church, over the years, has experienced this a couple of times. Fire has claimed our building, but not our community because the value of the community, those works, was made manifest in you. If the work which any man has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple? and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and that temple you are. You are the temple of God. You are the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And all of the work that every priest and every bishop does is to serve the temple and the temple is not a building. 
The temple is not 733 South Ashland. You are the temple. You are the body of Christ. It is to you that every priest serves, that every priest tries to adorn you with spiritual gifts and adornments that will hopefully last the fire, that when difficult times come, whether through loss or hardship, you are able to stand with your faith in Christ. And indeed, for our communities in Chicagoland, we are experiencing a little bit of that moment of struggle, of worry and anxiety. Because just as I was a worker who built on the foundation of St. Basil, another worker is coming after me. And his work, too, will be tested in the last days. But you do not need to be worried. Not just because the priest that is coming is a phenomenal priest who will love you and care for you meticulously and with great skill, but because the foundation of our church is Jesus Christ. In today's gospel passage, after Jesus Christ dismissed the crowds, he told the disciples, go on ahead. And he went into the mountains to pray while they went off on the boat. And they were going against the wind. And so the waves were beating against the ship. And that's a scary time. A dangerous body of water is not necessarily the ocean, but lakes, seas, because there's walls on either side. And so the waves bounce back and forth, creating bigger and bigger and bigger waves. It's very dangerous. There's a reason why the body of water that has more shipwrecks than any other body of water is Lake Superior here in the United States, simply because it is not an ocean, and so waves can become quite treacherous. So while the disciples are trying to navigate that storm, suddenly they look out into the winds and see a person walking to them on the water. And it looks like Jesus Christ. And they're scared. And they're screaming. It's like a horror movie. And then Jesus Christ says to them, take heart. It's me. Don't be afraid. Peter, wanting to test this, said, if it is you, tell me to come on the water. Jesus said, come. And so Peter began to walk on top of the water. Can you picture that, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ? Walking on waves, undulating across the Sea of Galilee. Have you ever been inside a bouncy castle with children jumping all over the place? I'm looking especially at my young altar boys. <laughs> Is it easy to walk in that? No. And yet, they were walking together on the sea. But then Peter saw the winds. He got scared. His faith wobbled, and he began to sink. And then he cried out a phrase that I hope that all of us can internalize for our own lives, Lord, save me. And Jesus Christ caught him and pulled him back on top of the water. He said, man of little faith, why did you doubt? I am here. The water, the waves, represent our anxiety. The things that threaten to drown us almost on a daily basis. The uncertainty when we're at sea because we don't know what is going to happen next. It all seems so chaotic. And yet, when we have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are able to walk serenely on top of that water. No matter what anxiety we face, no matter what changes or chaos comes to us, we will be just fine because our foundation, our hope, our anchor, the one who keeps us above the waters is Jesus Christ who strengthens us for every eventuality. And so, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't despair 
of the work that I have wrought here. I know it will continue after me. I know that the Lord will continue to bless you, strengthen you, and grow you, because we are all striving to be with him, to serve in his church, and to recognize that the temple of God is more than just the building. It is you. You are the temple of God. And I'm so blessed and happy that for the years that I've been able to serve, I've been able to serve you and love you. I almost lost it in the, uh, in the altar during the creed. Four years ago when I came here, Stavro uh, Georgopoulos said to me, I want to be an altar boy. And I says, okay, I've got one rule. You have to be able to say the creed. If you can say the creed, you can be an altar boy. I don't care how old young you are. That was my way of knowing whether a boy could take direction. And so for the next couple of weeks, this little boy would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse with his family. And he would come to me and say, Father, I believe. And so when I heard them saying the creed, all of my boys, strongly, first in Greek and then in English, I felt tears come down my eyes because these children and all of the children and all of you are the works that I have done. And it is my hope that my love for you continues and that you feel it even after I leave you as I will continue to pray for you and love you no matter where I'm serving and no matter where the future brings us all. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I want to take a moment to thank Helen Cantalones and all of her uh, golf committee for making an extremely successful golf outing this year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was an opportunity